Hello again from Northern Kentucky University. This is Alex, care of Mike Lively's Instructional Design and Distance Learning Team. And today I'm going to do an extension of a tutorial I did a few months ago about 3ds Max texturing and you. The last tutorial I did was kind of fast. It went over the basics of texturing without really getting into the nitty-gritty Photoshop work and or certain things inside of Max. It was just pretty much, hey, you know how to work Max, you know how to work Photoshop, let's bring those together with texturing. Mike asked me to do kind of a director's cut of that last tutorial, taking you from 3ds Max and modeling something fully, taking that model and then making the skin of it in Photoshop, and then bringing it back into Max, and then exporting it for 3D deployment online. After this series of tutorials, Mike wants me to do a tutorial on Photoshop CS4, mainly because it has native 3D uh, texturing in the program itself, which is brand new to Photoshop. It is awesome. Go out, go to Adobe's website and just look at it. It is amazing. But we wanted want to do something that was more inclusive to developers, because not everyone can go out and buy CS4 immediately. And what I'm going to show you will work in pretty much every version of Photoshop and also in a free version of a fun a free version of a photo editing software called GIMP, which you can find and I think is available for most any platform. No, now that I think about it, it's only available for Windows. Sorry. But there are other similar programs and it's pretty much the same. As long as they can work with a JPEG, you're be, you'll be fine. So what these first few tutorials will focus on is actually modeling something in Max for like a real world application. We recently had a grant project with a very prestigious energy company. I'm not going to name names. I can't. Contractual things. But anyway, we had to model like tons of houses for them. And while modeling houses is pretty easy, it's very time consuming. And there are certain tips and tricks I'm going to show you that will help you with a lot of other modeling that I didn't know immediately and I really wish I did. Um, and we'll get into more of those later. But what we're going to do now is we're going to model this house. Okay, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to have a theoretical project and where the owners of this house have come to us and said, hey, we're about to launch this website for advertising for our house to bring tourists here because, well, I don't want to say anything, but it might be haunted. Now, our client has supplied us with this rather creepy image as a basis to model our house on. You see this? I'm going to go ahead and drag this off screen. I can still see it for referencing. And again, you can model any house. Just go select one. Maybe take a picture of your own house. I just have it in Windows Photo Viewer over to the side. Now, I have Max already open, and it's just a brand new project, fresh, no big deal. And we have all these four view windows, but I'm going to hit Alt and then W to just get this view, because it's really all I need. And also because of the scaling of videos in YouTube, this will be easier for you guys to follow along. Now, I know you probably won't be able to see the grid on YouTube, and that's fine. It's cool. Just know it's there. But I'm going to go ahead and start working with the primitives. So I'm going to go over here and select this to make sure I have standard primitive, standard primitives. And the thing I selected is this little arrow button with this little star on the top. I cannot remember the technical name right now, and I'm so sorry for that. But look it up in the help if you need to. I'm going to go down to box, click that. Then I'm going to go over to the stage, and I'm just going to make a simple box. This will be the foundation for our house. Yeah, that's close enough. Now what I did was I just held down the left mouse button and then drug it out to there. And when I let go, it's still selectable. And you can see that I can change the height of it. Now I'm going to come up to here and make this about a nice, healthy two-story building. And I'm going to click the left mouse button again, and it's made for me. Pretty easy enough, right? Now I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to click on this so that I have access to the list modifier, and box one is selected, and that's what we want to edit. I'm going to go down here and show you the tool that is probably the most important tool in 3ds Max, and that would be Edit Poly. Click on that, and we get this. All right, by clicking the plus button, I can get to all the options I have for editing this poly. Now, if I click Vertex, what that means is that I can edit the vertex, or the points, of the polygon. And you can tell down here, also in Selection, it's kind of a more of a, a graphical um, indicator of what you've selected. Since I have points selected, I can click on these points and edit them. If I click Edge, and it'll give me this little triangle down here, I can select all the different edges of this shape. If I click Border, 
the border. And if I do polygon, I can actually select the individual polygons on this shape. Pretty easy in Element, of course, everything is selected. Now the one we'll be using, or the two we'll be using mostly, will be Edge and Polygon. And these, especially for house modeling or anything that's kind of architectural, are essential. If you need to do something that was kind of more organic, you could use these, of course, and you'll need to, but there's other means to do that. But we're only focused on making this house for the client, no big deal. So we have this basic box. I'm going to go ahead and make a roof on this. All right, the first thing we want to do in making the roof is go over to the polygon option and then just select the top of the roof. Go over here and then scroll down until you see the Edit Polygons menu and then find the Extrude button and go ahead and click that to select it. Now that we have this top portion selected, which will be our roof, hold down your left mouse button and just drag forward with the mouse. And you'll notice that we have this new part at the top. It's a little bit removed from the bottom part, and that's cool. I'll explain why in a second. So bring that up just a little bit, and then let go. Easy enough, right? The next step is actually using the Edges tool in the Edit Poly. So go to the Edges, and you'll, again, you'll notice that by these graphical indicators that we have a triangle selected, we're in Edges. And then scroll down until you find the Edit Edges menu. Now we still have Extrude selected from the Polygon menu itself and a lot of those kind of overlap and work very similarly but we're actually going to use something called connect But before we do that we're going to select the edges that we want to connect so I'm going to select this edge way over here and I'm going to hold down control and then click and select this edge way over here then I'm going to go over to the box beside the connect button and click it now we have a connect edges panel menu and you can actually see on the stage that those two edges that we selected are now connected with one line how awesome is that now I'm going to explain these uh, options a little bit more to you. Segments is pretty self-explanatory. I can bump that up to two, and now we have two edges instead of just one. If I go over to pinch, now here's a trick. You can actually, instead of just typing in numbers here to get your coordinates, go over to these arrow buttons, hold down your left mouse button, and check this out. By moving your mouse forward and backwards, and left to right, you can move... You can change the numbers at a lot faster rate. Check that out. How awesome is that? That's what pinch does. Slide, of course, moves both these lines across. Pretty easy, and this is actually a very powerful tool. Now, for the peak or top of this roof, I need everything to be in the center. I don't need any pinch or slide, and I only need one segment. So we have that. So I'm going to go into head and click OK. Now, by default, that line is still going to be selected, but let's just pretend that it wasn't selected I'm going to go over here and actually just click it. Now, press W, and you get the X, Y, and Z coordinates to edit on this. Now, this is awesome. Check this out. I'm just going to hold down or hover over the Z axis arrow until I get the uh, move icon. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and just bring it up. How awesome is that? We have the top of... We have the roof. The roof is made for us. Now, there's a little finessing we can do, which I'll show you, but it's pretty much done. That is the power of Extrude and also the power of Connect. Pretty awesome. Now, let's go ahead and make this roof totally awesome by still be using the Edge command. So we're going to select this edge. And again, if you don't get this uh, X, Y, and Z option, just press the, the W button and it'll come up. Now I'm going to go over to the side so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm going to move this house up by just holding down my middle mouse button on the main stage. can move whatever's in there just around. So that edge is still selected. I'm going to take the Y and move it over a little bit, and the Z and move that down to actually get the eave, or the overhang, of that side. Now I'm going to do it to the other side as well, selecting that. Going over to another side so we can get a better vantage point. Oops. Go back and select that. Bring down the Z. We have a roof. How awesome is that? 